B12s to the foreign exchange market. Alright, let's look at the balance of payment. What is a balance of payment? It's basically a record of all exports and import transactions between our country and other countries. So if we were looking at the South African balance of payment, we would have a list of all the South African exports to other countries and their amounts, and all the South African imports from other countries and their amounts. So that record represents the balance of payment. Now, the balance of payment is favorable. It's good. Remember, favorable means good. If exports are more than imports, we always want to have more exports than imports. Why is that? Remember, if we export to other countries, they must pay us. So if we have more exports, we've got more money coming in. All right, so exports are better than imports because exports brings in more money to the country, whereas imports means that we've got more money that's leaving the country. So that's why we say when we've got more imports than exports, then the balance of payment is unfavorable, not good. Okay, so there are three accounts that are used to record balance of payment transactions. The first one is the current account. The current account simply records exports and imports. All right, the capital transfer account uh, and the financial account, they go further. So the capital transfer account also records fixed assets. Remember, fixed assets, assets um, are all the items that the business owns. If they are fixed, the business will own those for more than one year. The financial account, on the other hand, also records assets and liabilities, right? Not just fixed assets, all assets and liabilities. Again, remember, assets are the items that the business owns. But liabilities are all the items that the business owes, like uh, debts and loans, right? So those are recorded in the financial account. Terms of trade. Now, terms of trade compares export prices and import prices using indexes. All right, so the export prices, the index for export prices is on top at the numerator and the import prices will be at the denominator. And then once you uh, have recorded those prices, you multiply by 100. Now at the bottom here, it says, if the terms of trade is more than 100, then there is an improvement, this is good. But if it's less than 100, then it means the terms of trade have declined. So let's say, for example, we got the index of export prices as 120. And then the index of import prices was, let's say, 90. Because we multiply this by 100. Uh, let's say the answer is 133. It's more than 100, indicating that the terms of trade have improved. Okay, what are the positive impacts of international trade? Here we will focus on a few. Uh, the most important ones, globalization. What's globalization? It's when countries interact, different countries interact, and they focus on international trade. Right, so inter um, international trade uh, will be a result of globalization. And then mass production. When you think of the word mass, you think massive, right? So producing in large quantities will lead to economies of scale. Economies of scale just means that the more you produce, the cheaper things become. Think of it as saying if you were, uh, wanted to buy a pizza on your own, maybe you couldn't afford it. But if you split this pizza with uh, three friends, now you can afford it because the unit cost becomes low. It's the same with production. The more you produce, the cheaper it becomes. Specialization, uh, as a result of international trade, countries only produce goods and services for which they have absolute or comparative advantage. We're going to talk about uh, absolute and comparative advantage in the next slide. 
Absolute advantage means that one country can produce goods cheaper than other countries, just cheaper. But comparative advantage, on the other hand, is when one country is able to produce goods at a lower opportunity cost, cheaper opportunity cost than other countries. Now, remember, opportunity cost means it's the cost of the next option. All right, so absolute advantage, you produce goods cheaper. Uh, comparative or relative advantage, remember comparative is also sometimes called relative. So relative advantage is when you produce goods at a cheaper opportunity cost than other countries. Okay, so let's say there's a balance of payment disequilibrium. Disequilibrium means the exports are not equal to imports. That's not a problem as long as exports are more than imports. It only becomes a problem if we have a deficit, a balance of payment deficit. If imports are more than exports, now we have a problem. What could the government do? The government could introduce export promotion, finding strategies to improve exports. The government could also introduce uh, import substitution strategies. In other words, replacing imports with locally produced goods. Um, and again, if there's a deficit, the government could also introduce import controls. Import controls measures to reduce imports from other countries. This could also prevent dumping. All right, uh, appreciation, depreciation. Appreciation, the currency increases. Depreciation, the currency decreases. So let's say if tomorrow the rand becomes uh, a, little, a bit stronger than the dollar, then the rand is appreciated. Uh, but if tomorrow the rand is way weaker than the dollar, then we'll say the rand is depreciated. But the appreciation and the depreciation are caused by market forces. They are caused by demand and supply, All right? Which is different from revaluation and devaluation. Revaluation also means the currency is going up. Devaluation is uh, when the currency, the value of the currency is going down. Uh, but unlike appreciation and depreciation, where uh, the value of the currency was changed by demand and supply, here the revaluation, the currency is increased by the South African Reserve Bank deliberately. And in devaluation, the currency is decreased by the South African Reserve Bank deliberately. So appreciation and depreciation, the currency changes because of demand and supply. But for revaluation and devaluation, the value of the currency changes because uh, of the South African Reserve Bank. All right. Thank you.